Good afternoon. In today's, in the meantime, I uh, thought I'd start by noting that I'm wearing uh, a t-shirt from my daughter's Montessori Elementary School, and I, I won't tell you how old they are today, but um, you know, maybe that's a good springboard for talking about relevance. And our daily office reading uh, the other day gave us insight into the very early church from Acts chapter 2. It said, quote, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. That generation lived out their faith in a particular way. It obviously worked or we wouldn't be here talking about this. But it led me to wonder how the ways in which we structure our lives, the world around us and our church, how those ways help or hinder passing on the relevant matters of our faith to future generations. Go back to Northeast Japan around the year 1000 Common Era, thousand years ago. The residents decided there that they needed to warn future inhabitants of the area of that vast coastal plain that it was subject to tsunamis and it was not a suitable building site ever. So to this day, some local residents understand the writing on the stones as, an, as the intended warning that they are. But in spite of that, some locals did build there and those people paid a terrible price when a tsunami swept them away in 2011. In a completely different part of the world, far underground in the Nevada desert, our nation is storing nuclear waste from power generating reactors. The area will be radioactive and dangerous to animals for 300,000 years. How do we create a quote, danger, don't go there, warning sign that will be understood even 10,000 years from now. Consider, for example, that we can read ancient Greek and its antecedent linear B script used by the Mycenaeans, but the Minoan or Cretan linear A script, only a century older than linear B, has never been deciphered. Linear A and linear B date back to about 1500 BCE, or about 3500 years prior to today. We're talking about readability and understandability 10,000 years, maybe 300,000 years. So these early Monday morning thoughts led me to ponder, what will our spiritual legacy be? What will we pass on to future generations that is important to them? What will help guide them in making the world a better place? In the world that emerges from our viral cocoon of fear in six to 12 months, what will be important? How will we communicate things of ultimate concern? Is that perhaps what Jesus was trying to do? Teach us how to get along in ways that transcend culture, history, time, and ideology. Love your neighbors as yourself. Love your enemies. Love those who hate you. Give to those in need. Be gracious as your Father in heaven is gracious. Show mercy. Do not hinder the children. And my favorite, you will do greater things than these, that is, the things that Jesus did. Many of you may not know, but we are using this downtime at church, along with some funds from recent bequests, to address 80 years of deferred maintenance. There are several projects underway that will ensure the beautiful structure we have at Sixth and Court will be usable for another century. Concurrently, we need to pay attention to the foundations of our faith. Whether future generations will be singing Beethoven, hip hop, or Swahili folk songs in church is irrelevant. Whether we are still called Episcopalians with bishops and clergy and all that stuff is irrelevant. What will be relevant is whether people who attend this church and those who come after us will love their enemies, show mercy, feed the hungry, and clothe others with dignity and righteousness, and reach out in love 
rather than retreat in fear.